Liberal cabinet ministers are talking tough about a world superpower. China is an increasingly disruptive global power. And Canadians expect us to have an ambitious, clear-eyed, comprehensive plan, and that's exactly what our government is doing. That plan is the federal government's new Indo-Pacific strategy. It earmarks more than $2.2 billion to forge closer ties with other countries in the region, a half billion of that to improve military and intelligence cooperation. We will challenge China when we need to, and we will cooperate with China when we must. The strategy comes as China behaves aggressively, cracking down on protests in Hong Kong and threatening Taiwan's autonomy. Also at a time when Canada's relationship with China is complicated. After the detention and release of two Canadians, retaliation widely believed for the prosecution of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou in Vancouver. Some say the plan doesn't do enough to protect diaspora communities in Canada or address allegations China interfered in a Canadian election. I don't think you can go out or he, the government should lead us out into the Indo-Pacific region until it's dealt with a real threat to our autonomy, to our sovereignty. Ministers sidestep questions about potential retaliation from China, even though Canada's approach lines up with our allies. That being said, we're a little easier to attack than the U.S., for instance. So I would expect the government of China to, um, you know, say some words that we don't like. Something seen when President Xi Jinping confronted the Prime Minister on the sidelines of the G20, after the Prime Minister's office shared details of a meeting between the two. If in Canada, we believe in your path, free and open and frank dialogue, and that is what we will continue to have. Earlier this month, China's embassy in Canada called preliminary details of this strategy detrimental to peace and security in the region. It went on to say that Canada was going down the wrong path. David Thurton, CBC News, Ottawa.